Yar Gyasi's book, Transcendent Kingdom, was first published in the year 2020. During the time that Gifty is hard at work doing the studies that are required for her PhD thesis on the neural connections of addiction and depression, she gets news from Pastor John that her mother is going through another period of serious depression. In order for Gifty to be able to take care of her mother, she begs Pastor John to book a flight for her mother to California. While Gifty divides her time between taking care of her mother and working on her research, she thinks back on her youth and contemplates the ways in which her religious beliefs and her scientific studies have influenced her life. In order to provide a more advantageous upbringing for her first child, Nana, Gifty's mother left Ghana and settled in the United States while he was still an infant. Not much later, Gifty's father, the Chin Chin Man, arrived too. When Gifty was born, her mother was already in her forties. The job that Gifty's mother had in the United States was that of a home nurse. Gifty's father, who was caring for the children as their main caregiver while their mother worked the night shift, was a school janitor by the time she was born. But the Chin Chin Man visited Ghana again while Gifty was still a preschooler, and he never came back. Soon after moving to Alabama, Gifty's mother became a member of the Pentecostal First Assemblies of God Church, which is mostly white. At the time, she did not know enough about the United States to understand that churches in the country might have either black or white congregations. Gifty spent her childhood attending this church, and she never questioned the doctrine that she was taught there. It was there in middle school that she had her coming to Jesus experience. Nana took over as Gifty's main caregiver when their biological father moved out. Gifty cherished and admired her older brother, who always made sure that she was taken care of. Gifty was a youngster who took life very seriously. She had strong religious beliefs and was very rule-oriented. When she grew up, she wanted to either be the wife of a preacher or a movie star. Nana was a talented athlete who started playing soccer when he was quite young. Nana, however, quit playing soccer once the Chin Chin Man moved out since soccer was his favorite sport. After some time, he decided to try out for the basketball team at his high school, where he quickly established himself as a standout player. But he developed an addiction to opiates when his doctor recommended OxyContin to treat some damaged ligaments in his knee. During the years that he was hooked to drugs, Gifty became Nana's primary caregiver. Unfortunately, he passed away from an accidental overdose while he was still a high school student. After attending his burial, Gifty realized that she no longer believed in God. Following Nana's passing, Gifty's mother sank into a very low state of despair. In the beginning, Gifty, who was only 11 years old at the time, tried to take care of her mother all by herself. But when her mother made an attempt to take her own life and was forcibly committed, Gifty was taken to Ghana to live with her aunt Joyce so that her mother could focus on getting well. Gifty's mother and brother's struggles with addiction and despair were the motivation for her decision to major in science at Harvard University for her undergraduate education and to seek a PhD degree in neuroscience at Stanford University. She is doing research on the reward-seeking behaviors of mice in the hopes of discovering a method to combat addiction using optogenetics. Back in the present, Although though Gifty is preoccupied with her research trials, she makes sure that her mother is taken care of and makes an effort to avoid becoming too close to her co-worker Catherine and her lab partner Han. Because of her upbringing in her family and religion, as well as her relationships with her college mate Anne and a serious relationship called Raymond, she views friendship and intimacy with suspicion. She is hesitant to speak about her own background, 
discuss her mother's present sickness in any great detail, or beg for assistance. Despite this, Han is always inviting Gifty to events, and when Gifty inadvertently revealed some of the truth to Catherine, Catherine makes it a point to be kind and attentive to Gifty. Catherine is always there for her with baked delicacies and words of encouragement. Exactly as Gifty's experimental study is coming to a close and she believes that her life is getting back on track, she goes to her apartment only to discover that her mother has gone missing. Gifty contacts Catherine in a state of panic, confesses that she isn't all right, and begs for assistance because she is afraid that her mother may try suicide once again. A little while later, the two ladies come upon Gifty's mother seated on the side of the road. Gifty gives her mother a soothing bath as soon as she gets her back inside the house. Her mother tells Gifty not to worry since there is nowhere she could ever go that God wouldn't be with her. After her mother has fallen asleep, Gifty leaves the flat and goes for a drive in the city. She has the sensation that she is no longer required to take care of her family members for the first time since she was five years old. In the epilogue, Gifty has completed her graduate studies and is working as a research neuroscientist in a lab at Princeton University. She is now a couple with Han. She has also satisfied her need for the transcendent, which she finds in her surroundings and in the people around her. Yet she holds on to the recollection of her religious upbringing. Gifty often spends time in the sanctuary of the nearby Episcopal Church, where she contemplates her history, considers the picture of Christ on the cross, and attempts to make meaning of her existence. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.